guys, this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project and I'd like to talk to you about meat birds. These are the Cornish rock mix birds and as you can see I have two different generations of meat birds here. Um, first of all their nature, they're very gentle birds and because they grow so rapidly they're still chicks at heart when they're uh, ready for the table. So, I've not seen a pecking order, I've not seen any aggressiveness, except that they're big, dumb, and clumsy seeming. They, the only harm that could come to another bird from the meat birds is them accidentally stepping on another. Uh, and because these birds are so slow, they're very, very slow moving, they do not chase each other around pecking. So, you can mix multiple generations as you see here of the meat birds with no problems at all and they're very docile they also will once we take we put them in the chicken coop at night uh, for safety and lock them up in the big chicken coop and then during the day we bring them out for semi free ranging and they actually will get used to the routine and they come running to us in the mornings to get out into their fresh air uh, place like here and in the evenings when they're ready for bed they come running right up to you wanting to be put into bed so they're really easy to care for um, as you might be seeing there is one that got out they are not they don't roam like your normal chickens they're not going to try to get away from you and try to explore wide areas they'd rather stay with the group uh, I'm not quite sure why, but they are more of a flock bird, and they really stick together. So that bird right now is trying to find its way back in. It's all it cares about, and it'll be happy when I put it in. So they're really, oops, sorry I bumped the camera. They're very easy to take care of, these meat birds. Now, food and water. If you keep them enclosed these I'd say my first what did we have 16 birds 16 meat birds were eating a gallon and a half of dry meat chick starter food in a day and they were going through about three gallons of water in a day you'll see they're standing in the water dish constantly and just drinking because they eat so much, they have to drink a lot to keep that food flowing through them. Now, to reduce food costs and water use, I've noticed by putting them outside like this, semi-free ranging, you will see the, the birds are exploring the little area and they're actually eating the vegetation and scratching for bugs. This has dual benefits. One, the birds are healthier much healthier than the uh, crowd raised birds so to say the birds that are raised in crowded conditions where they're not allowed to get out they don't get fresh air and they don't get exercise these birds are very healthy from egg to table for their whole life the the chicken breasts if i remember and um the, the chicken breasts on these birds are just tremendous. They're gigantic. And my viewers on my daily videos have commented how they have never seen such large chicken breasts. And some even think it's, it's freakish and has to be some kind of uh, uh, hormones. But we actually use NatureWise um, Chick Starter at 22%. Oh, that's on a, a rare thing the one bird wanted to get into the food and pick the other. Anyway, at 22% protein for fast growth, we use the NatureWise um, all natural chick feed. So there's no hormones and we use non-medicated food because basically you are what you eat. And I do not want to eat medicated birds or hormone, hormone filled birds, that's bad for you. So all natural. Anyway, we put them out every day. They get their exercise. They're very strong and very healthy. 
and they have happy lives. So when we butchered our first group of birds, they had no idea what was coming. They thought they were just going out for a day in the sun and uh, they came to us happily and we uh, gently took care of the, the situation. But the meat from those birds was the best and bigger than store purchased meat. Also cleaner and pure without the necessity of adding uh, salt brine and liquids to pump up the meat like they do for the commercial birds. Ours were naturally huge. So these are really, really easy to handle. Um, again, free ranging like this, they have a bit of a cage because otherwise we'd lose them to, we have coyotes and skunks, possums, raccoons, hawks, um, so we have to keep them protected. The tree branches above, or some sort of a shelter, will keep the hawks from flying in and swooping down and taking a bird. But the fence will keep them from wandering off too far. Again, it's not really necessary, but it helps. Meat birds, otherwise called broilers, or Cornish rock mix, also are never going to fly. So they love to flap their wings a little bit, and you can see the babies are very active. But the trees, you have no fear of them escaping a short fence. Uh, one foot high fence is all you need to keep them in. They're never going to get over that. And they have no capabilities of flying up into the trees. Whereas our normal chickens would be out of here in a flash. They would, this would not contain them for five seconds. They'd all be running all through the forest and start getting eaten up by wild animals here. So, another reason they're very easy to care for. Um, through the period we've done experimentation with keeping birds in the chicken coop uh, for a week as compared to keeping the meat birds out in the open air during the day. And by keeping them outdoors, we've re reduced our food costs by 60%, um, uh, basically, or by 70%. Our food cost is down to one third of what it was when compared to keeping them locked up without the ability to free, ro free range. This has a couple benefits. We move the birds around to a different location every second day. These birds don't move very much, so they're not gonna ravage an area as quickly as your normal birds. Your, your standard barnyard chickens are gonna rip out an area this big in a single day, and it'll be just flattened and devastated. Uh, comparison, our chicken tractor right here, that's one day of use with the standard birds. So the meat birds can be left out for two days at a time in a single area without really destroying the, the place. And that's convenient, it's less work. And the benefit is that they, because they eat so much, they also poop a lot. And that's pure fertilizer. And by moving them around the property, we're actually fertilizing the soil extensively. And like here is a blueberry patch. The blueberry season is over, so I'm gonna let the birds strip off the leaves and strip down the whatever they wanna eat. It's very healthy for them, and a lot of bugs out here in this area. Plus, they're going to fertilize this area, which will boost blueberry production for next year. So there's an added bonus for moving the birds around like this. And it's less work because I don't have to clean up the manure afterwards and I don't have any bedding area to clean out because they've spent only the overnights in the chicken coop. Compare that to our normal barnyard flock. This is a wide variety of chickens. We have two to three of, of each variety of a bunch of different types of chickens. And these birds here have a seven foot tall fence so that they cannot escape. So they're always looking at, for an opportunity to explore and get out and uh, get lost and become eaten by predators. These birds 
we have 14 of these birds as compared to 15 meat birds. So if we're comparing, it's a pretty equal amount. And these were born about the same time as the first batch that we butchered. So these are actually older than any of the other birds, although they're smaller than our second generation of meat birds. So they're not going to grow as fast. They're getting the same feed as the meat birds. So the meat birds are um, bred to eat more and to grow faster. Uh, and that's getting to my point. I can leave a three gallon container out for these birds and it'll last a week with no problem at all because they're, they're out foraging more than anything. And we can throw in some grass and clippings now and then from the weed in the garden. You may see the, the stuff on the floor underneath them, which also helps make more compost for later when we clean this out next spring for gardening. Actually, we clean this out periodically, but next spring we can use it in our garden. And uh, the dead vegetation along with the chicken poop will really help us build up some good compost over the winter. Anyway, these birds require three gallons every, I'd say, five days of water and about three gallons of food every five days, to, five to seven days. And I go with gallons because I know that's the capacity of our containers. We use quart sized containers. So, huge difference in the amount of food that the meat birds eat when confined as compared to the barnyard chickens. I said the same quantity of broiler chickens will eat that same amount of food in a single day if left confined. In summary, semi free ranging your broiler chickens is going to give you healthier meat, happier chickens, and reduce food costs by about 60-70% so it's a serious advantage the chickens are able to grow larger because they're healthier and have a longer life now at 12 weeks our birds were a little bit tougher so the the larger birds are going to be a little tougher but slow cooking makes it really really good meat the taste is different the smell is different from anything from the grocery store and it's just the cleanest, purest thing you can get. So, anyway, hope this helps people out. This is our experience with the Cornish Cross uh, meat birds, otherwise known as broilers. So, talk to you guys later. Please do like, subscribe, and share, and check out the article. The link will be below in the description and in the comments. Uh, Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Happy meat birds.